their approaches and their behavior and their understanding contradicts the very thing they want to accomplish pervasively right now. That even though you're attempting to aid them in what they wish, truly wish to accomplish in the world, within themselves and their communities, it is perceived as an attack on their desire and because they have associated their desire with their approach. But the approach is very fallible. It's very flawed in many ways, uh, at least what we're seeing happening right now. It could be much more accelerated, smooth to the point, and uh, need less mess and separation and division. If people actually understood what they're trying to accomplish and then take the time to pause their need for emotional gratification, to actually consider their approach, and not only from a logical, physical standpoint, not from an emotional, social standpoint, but also inevitably from a metaphysical, vibrational and spiritual standpoint, because you just see people take on the vibration of that which they oppose all the time. And I, I guess they just don't understand that that's not how it works. So it's like wanting, it's like fighting gravity in a sense, like fighting physics, you know, metaphysics in this case, but it's still physics trying to defy laws and wanting to get to that desired outcome, but having a completely flawed approach because the physics are not understood, the physics of efficiency, the physics of how something can be accomplished. How do you bring that awareness to someone who is so fixated on their emotional gratification and they associate that with the end result they actually desire and they don't see the separation between those two topics? It's kind of what it's been happening in my Instagram story today. So by definition, it's the lack of wisdom, the need for emotional gratification. And then we always seek it outside ourselves, always blame the outside. We take on the energy, we take on, we become the energy of that which we oppose. But somehow we believe that by opposing that and becoming the energy of what we oppose, that somehow, against the laws of metaphysics, we will create the reality we desire but we're doing the opposite. So shooting ourselves in the foot, like addicts, self-defeating pattern. I'm standing up for something. I'm doing something good. Uh, that's the gratification. And the gratification totally blinds us from the most efficient approach. And this is the important thing for people to realize, I think, is, and this is what I call in this context, true courage, as opposed to acting on your need for emotional gratification and considering that to be courageous. I, I say that's not courageous. It's actually quite weak minded. What's so important to realize is that if we want a certain result and we're really clear that we want that result, then we have to step out of our bubble and our need for gratification need to be, needs to be paused. That takes courage, takes um, faith, takes patience, takes self-control, takes the ability to resist certain temptations. And we need to actually consider do we want the outcome? Do we actually really want the outcome? Or do we want the emotional gratification? Because nine out of 10 times the emotional gratification opposes, contradicts, obscures, slows down, postpones the actual result that people say they're all for. So they claim they're for this, they claim they're for equality, but the way to go about it is satisfying emotional gratification, the need for it to a fault, shooting themselves in the foot, because there's no breathing room, there's no pause, there's no reflection, there's no consideration. Do I really want that outcome? If I want it truly enough, then I must investigate every aspect of my approach, including my need for emotional gratification, recognition from other people, acknowledgement of my pain, and all that. That's all emotional gratification. I understand the tempting nature of it. But we have to, if we're serious about the outcome, being true and pure, then we have to pure ourse purify ourselves in the process. And I just see people refusing to do that and still expecting the outcome that they are opposing in their very own state of consciousness and vibration. And it just goes against all the metaphysical laws that I've become familiar with. So it is like seeing humanity shoot itself in the foot. We have a lot of self-defeating patterns and we're addicted to that cycle. We've gotten used to that cycle. We don't know any other way. So on a, simple, simplified level, you could say that people just don't know any better. And therefore they act on that need for emotional gratification. Um, but in a deeper sense, it all comes back to not knowing who we truly are, what we truly are, 
So it is all about true self-knowledge, true self-awareness. It comes back to spiritual awakening, and that solves every human psychological man-made issue that we ever created. But we don't want that. We say we want it, but we want the gratification more than we actually want what we think or say we want. So it's a false claim. It's a lack of honesty, lack of self-observation. And some people don't actually don't know any better, so they can't be held accountable for that, so to speak. We can only educate and offer a pathway to more patience, more wisdom, more self-reflection, more honesty. But yeah, for a lot of people right now, that's just a bridge too far. It would require too much sacrifice of their their engagement in the, in the emotional, energetic momentum of needing that fix, needing that gratification, needing that recognition of people's pain and all that stuff. And it's just so much easier to find scapegoats and to find oppressors and to blame other people in other circumstances for our state of being. It's just not the way to liberation. It never will be, ever, never has been, never will be. But it could be a baby step on the way to waking up. Yeah, if they could only uh, have a taste of what it feels like to know yourself, yeah, then they will feel it's better than emotional gratification. Right. Then they know it's a reality. Then they know that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. If you don't even have that in your vision as one of the possibilities, you don't know it exists. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what the solution feels like. You don't understand the metaphysics of life. Then, then you don't know any better. So how can you be expected to uh, sacrifice something for something you don't know exists? C'est la vie. <laughs> mm -hmm.